My name is Rob Bacicco, and today I'm going to interview Donna Dorozinski, who is the Editor-in-Chief of Good Clinical Practice, a Question and Answer Reference Guide. Hi, I'm Donna Dorzinski. I am the founder and CEO of Just In Time GCP, and GCP has been a passion of mine for a very long time. So I'm super excited to have, be a part of this book. Donna, what are some of the highlights of the new edition? So Rob, I think one of the most exciting parts of this book is that we took and combined all of the country regulations into each of the different topic areas. So instead of having a section on each of the countries, we made a real concerted effort to bring the regulations from each of the countries into each topic. So I think for me, that's one of the biggest highlights of, of the changes. And we've got a few new chapters that we're going to be sharing with folks. So I think there'll be some really, um, some new content that's very contemporaneous. So Donna, you talked about the new approach with this edition, but what are some of the new chapters and why do you think they're important? Well, when we were putting together the outline for the book, we tried to select topics that were uh, really important into how we're developing drugs today. So we added a chapter on diversity. So we incorporated DEI into the recruitment chapter. And then we also added a chapter on decentralized clinical trials. Uh, it's certainly been a buzzword for quite a while. And so I really felt it was important to give the readers a nice perspective on not only the regulations, but some ideas on how to apply the regulations in their trial. A really contemporaneous topic was the uh, world events, right? So we're all coming out of a pandemic and we've learned a lot from the pandemic and we literally went right from the pandemic to the war in Ukraine. You know, we had research subjects in Russia and Ukraine and we had to figure out how do we continue to keep them in our clinical trials in, in what was a very different region of the world. And most recently with the wars that's happening in Israel, again, uh, making sure that uh, individuals that were doing studies in those countries had some ideas as to what kind of risk assessments they needed to do and, and changes to their process. Donna, as the author of the chapter on TMF, what are some of the most important things that you feel are included that readers really need to know? So as you know, Rob, TMF is a passion of mine and has been for a very long time. Uh, so it was important to me to incorporate uh, some of the content from ICHE6 R3 into this chapter. And while it's still draft, I think we have a really good idea of the importance of data integrity and be able to really understand the movement of data in the trial. Um, TMF is part of your data in, during your trial. And so understanding the movement from one organization to another and the importance of that, and also the importance of having an archival plan and understanding that that's also part of your data integrity too. So I think those are two really big differences, some additions to the chapter. And then of course, there's the content around how to have quality oversight and just how to make sure you have an inspection ready trial master file. Donna, it's hard to make a book like this be all things to all people. So um, what's in it for folks that think that they're already very experienced in GCP? So the really cool thing is, Rob, that I've been doing this for a really long time. And I learned so much in reading the content that some of the other editors put together with their chapters. Um, I actually didn't know a whole lot about decentralized clinical trials when we started this book. And that was one of the reasons why it was so important to me to make sure there was content around that. So I think there's been so many new regulations and guidances since the last edition that really right up to the last minute, we were adding new material and new references. So I really think there's something for everybody. And just also a pitch for the new individual, the individual who's new to clinical research. I know when I started in the business a long time, it kind of became my go-to for everything. And so I think whether you're new to clinical research or you've been doing this as long as you and I have, there's still something in it for everybody. Donna, I think you make a point in the forward of this book to really explain how things have changed since the last edition. Is there anything else that you'd like to share about the book? One of the things that we did is we separated out some chapters because I thought it was important to give some text and some content to key areas like risk-based quality management as separate from Qual clinical mo site monitoring, making sure that we had FDA, EMA, MHRA inspections really well covered. So I actually did a separate chapter on that, calling out what are some of the most recent findings from the regulators. And so I, I tried to give some additional space to topics that I thought people really wanted to hear more about. So Donna, thanks for your insights on the new book. I know you just launched it here at Scope, but if people want to know how they can get access to it, how would you advise them? Yeah, absolutely, Rob. So you can go to the website for Barnett International. Thanks for doing the interview, Rob. Really appreciated it.